Hi, welcome to I Love the Library. My name is Deb and I'm the Public Services Supervisor here. I've come across some great new arrivals that I want to tell you about. Sorry, they're not really beach reads, but I sure found them interesting. First book I want to mention is First Women, The Grace and Power of America's Modern First Ladies by Kate Anderson Brower. First ladies make up the world's most elite sorority. Beginning with Jacqueline Kennedy through, up through Michelle Obama, Kate Anderson Brower tells the stories of the remarkable women who have been first ladies of our country, with stories ranging from the heartwarming to the shocking and tragic. Brower discusses the first ladies' rivalries and friendships with one another and explores everything from their political causes to their public and private relationships with their husbands. I found it just really a fascinating reading because of course I remember each of these first ladies. So, First Women, The Grace and Power of Americans, America's Modern First Ladies. After reading First Women, I was interested in learning about more of some of, more about some of these modern first ladies. I came across another new arrival, Lady Bird and Linden, The Hidden Story of a Marriage That Made a President by Betty Boyd Caroli. Caroli provides a fresh look at Lady Bird Johnson that upends her image as a plain Jane who was married for her money and mistreated by Linden. This Lady Bird worked quietly behind the scenes through every campaign, every illness, and a trying presidency as a key strategist, fundraiser, barnstormer, peacemaker, and indispensable therapist. She, Caroli also tells a love story of a complex marriage, an irresistible tale of politics, ambition, and the power of unconditional marital love. So go ahead and read Lady Bird and Linden, The Hidden Story of a Marriage That Made a President. Here's a book that's simply fun to read. Everybody's heard about The Bird, the true story of the 1960s rock and roll in Minnesota by Rich, Rick Shefchik. How many of you can say that title without hearing the melody in your head? Of course, you have to be of a certain age to do that. But anyway, this book gives a vivid behind the scenes, up close and personal account of how a handful of Minnesota rock bands erupted out of a small Midwest market and made it big. Rick Shefchik begins with musicians from the 1950s and early 60s, including Augie Garcia, the Frenderman, Mike Wagner, and the Bobs, and of course, Bobby V, who we all know has ties to Detroit Lakes. For a delightful look back at history of rock and roll in Minnesota, check out this book. A little teaser, I am thinking this author might be fun to have for Detroit Lakes uh, 2017 Polar Fest, so we'll see what I can do. So, by the way, how many of you remember listening to Ouija? I think I spent my early teen years listening to WDGY, Ouija. Um, the dog lover in me had to check out this book, Pitbull, The Batter, Battle Over an American Icon. In the last year, my son acquired a rescue Pitbull. I was not happy at first, especially since I have young grandchildren and hearing the reputation of pit bulls. I was surprised Dax has turned out to be very friendly and a loving dog. This hugely illuminating story of how a popular breed became the most demonized and supposedly the most dangerous of dogs and what roles humans have played in this transformation. I didn't know it, but this pit Pit bulls were favored by Teddy Roosevelt, Helen Keller, and of course Hollywood's Little Rascals. Miss um, Dickey not only writes about the ebb and flow of public fear and loathing of the pit bull, she takes us on a tour of behavioral science, genetics, and you know, and it shows us that breeding never guarantees an individual dog's personality. So read Pitbull. See you at the library. <laughs>